Hey there, I just wanted to do a really quick video on the things that I saw at DSISD this morning in case you wanted to reflect. There's also an opportunity if you are so inclined to go to the workshop this afternoon or to go to the happy hour uh, this evening. Um, there is an open bar if that's of interest to you. Um, but I did want to share what was going on this morning. Really great stuff and if uh, we want to get another chance to go, I did get assurance that we can go on our own um, either as a group or we can organize uh, visits directly for DSISD. Um, and so um, there are a couple of notes and I'm going to share the whole document with you, but I wanted to walk through kind of the experience. Um, and so they gave us a little bit of an introduction. Um, so this was our, here, let me pull up. This was our um, sort of experience um, throughout the whole time that we were there. We did a, a, a quick debrief and then we visited some classrooms. We saw math, uh, language arts, um, and uh, a couple of other things uh, that were really interesting because it was really personalized to the needs of uh, those folks that were in there. Um, so there are a couple of terms that you're going to want to know. So PLP, anytime it is referenced in this, is the uh, personalized learning plan and every student has one and they are working through it, through projects, through individual assignments. Um, and, and those kinds of things. Um, and then uh, PLT, which is personalized learning time, um, and that kids are working through a learning playlist um, that is a part of their overall plan. Um, the idea is to both recuperate learning um, that for kids who need that or accelerate learning for kids who need that um, and really work through the progressions on their own. Um, this uh, is the overall uh, scope of their day-long uh, schedule, and it's actually the same schedule that East High School uses, um, but they use it for different things. And so um, it's sort of the same master schedule that a comprehensive high school uses, um, but it's really focused on the personalized learning time, the, uh, the project-based experiences, um, and really working through um, sort of each component. These are the competencies. I just pulled this from the website um, and it's just really looking at how the school is a competency-based system and what they are focused on. So the personal academic excellence, lifelong learning and citizenship, innovative thinking and uh, action, and then transformative leadership. So these are sort of the qualities that they're working through and then the student competencies down below that all of their content and processes are aligned to. Uh, now because this is, whoops, uh, because this is the Summit Learning Program, we're talking about the uh, Summit uh, LMS, the Summit Content, and the Summit PD, um, but DSISD has done it in a slightly different fashion where they've actually adapted a lot of this work um, and really applied it. So they have a project-based, uh, experiential-based uh, learning um, experience or, or uh, curriculum um, with a flex block um, that they implement um, for a number of extended opportunities for kids. So the Summit Learning Program, um, they talked a little bit about, they've got 130 schools that are sort of taking a, a part of that. Most are district schools. Um, and that the four things that the Summit learning environment are focused on our goal setting, content knowledge, cognitive skills, and then the habits of success. So even though many of the schools implement it differently, those are sort of the core elements. Um, and then this is kind of what it looks like, and it's a little hard to see, but you might be able to zoom in a little bit on the PDF. Um, sort of a progression and this blue line is kind of like where you are supposed to be in this particular point in the year or where you know where you are in this particular point in the year and you are either ahead or uh, not quite as far along um, and you know because this is your plan. And so there's an opportunity for other schools to become a part of it. This is uh, Danny Medved, who has started uh, DSISD a number of years ago, I think three years ago now. Uh, he had a year zero, and then this is year two of the actual school. Um, and he talked about, you know, sort of their, uh, their core um, programming um, and what their four-year uh, components are. So grades 9 and 10 are right now, and then they're rolling out 11 and 12 uh, in the subsequent next two years. Um, and so I just wanted to show a couple of uh, 
uh, student experiences. So this was a math experience where he was going through a self-assessment um, that was going to um, help him to either move faster or that he was going to go back and do a little bit of reteaching uh, or relearning, perhaps. Um, so this was the teacher that was working one-on-one -on -one and all of the other students were working through their math time because it was the personalized learning time. So he said, uh, this is different because you can keep taking the assessment until you master it. Eight out of 10 on this very small bite-size assessment was mastery. If you did anything less than that, um, then you had to go back and learn or do something different in order to demonstrate uh, mastery and things like that. Um, he had the choice to work in a group or individual um, for their project-based work, and he actually chose um, to do one of his projects on a poster rather than on the computer. Um, this should be 90 minutes for their blocks, but 45 minutes for the non-block days. And I just took some pictures on like, these are typical things that are around the school, that are around, you know, what's going on in the, in the classroom. Um, but all of these things are, um, you know, are different by kid because it, there's not, I didn't observe a single instance of whole class direct instruction, um, which is pretty uh, valuable. This was another, oops, um, this was another math class here just out in the hallway here, or they call this the, the Raven, the Raven's Nest. And so this is a collaborative space and they actually have to unlock the Raven's Nest um, by demonstrating that they have the ability to work independently um, out in a space that is not, you know, sort of dedicated with a teacher. Um, this was one of the language arts classrooms where there was a small group that was working with one of the teachers. Um, this was a demonstration space over here where a student was demonstrating an essay um, that was going on um, back here. These students were revising uh, their writing. Um, and then this one was in the next uh, language arts classroom. Um, I think these were ninth graders. Um, and I just wrote some notes here that they're, that it, all of the courses that they do are teacher created. They leverage the content and assessments from Summit, um, but it's not necessarily all from, from the Summit learning uh, platform. Um, and the LMS that they chose, which is Summit, sort of bends everything towards a PBL approach, and I thought that was really valuable. Um, they implemented an advisory. It's 10 to 13 kids per class, um, and it was really interesting to look at um, this right here. So this was their daily check-in during uh, their um, their daily check-in during their advisory time. Really fascinating stuff where they're setting goals every single day. This is how I'm going to um, actually plan on uh, you know, achieving my goal and things like that. I found that really valuable. Um, and then this was one of the folks who were using um, advisement for a project-based uh, approach. And they were all working on this chemistry project that they were actually quite worried about because they were going to have to pr uh, present uh, tomorrow. Um, and it was very interesting to see that, uh, that in level of engagement. They were all working on it together. Um, and then this was a component that was rather interesting. So they provide literally the entire program, all of the resources, the PD, the uh, flights out to California to see schools and to uh, do the leader training and everything like that, uh, as well as teacher training. Like all of that is paid for um, and it's really interesting. So if you are interested in the application process, I totally recommend that you look at it um, and that there is an opportunity to, to keep on diving in uh, this afternoon at four o'clock. I'm going to send this out right now. So you have it. Um, and then obviously um, you can uh, apply and, and be part of a part of it if you would like to do that. Um, thanks so much for watching. I'm sorry that you weren't able to, to make it today.